This video will cover real-time notifications using ASP.NET Core and Signal R. As your application goes through its lifetime, events are going to be happening all over the place in different services based on different actions some other users take. And you want to notify some users about some events depending if the user is online or not. SignalR can help with that. We are going to cover a local scenario where all the notifications are happening within a service and a distributed example where you can have many of the same service running and a SignalR connection is maintained only to one of the boxes. How do you make sure that a specific user that's connected to that box is notified? This should cover other scenarios that will require this distributed setup and should really give you an idea of how to handle a distributed setup with SignalR. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and dive in into the example. We have the notification service. Uh, real quick for the program CS, I'm going to specify my own port. So this is the args thing that is happening here. I want to spin up the same application, at different instances on different ports. Otherwise, the startup the main thing about the authentication here, it is still a mocked authentication. When a connection is created, I pass a query parameter of user, which will equal to the user ID. This is just going to make it very easy for me to specify who I want to send a notification to and filter through the users by the user ID. Usually these will be goods and you will need to put whatever infrastructure you need to figure out what user you want to notify but that is what I have in my application as a demonstration. The next part may look a little bit weird, but we have a singleton service of iNotification sync with a notification service. When we then register a hosted service, which is essentially a background service, we get the iNotification sync and then cast it back to the notification service. This will be the primary focus of this video. And just to kind of glance over, the other bits are pretty standard just user ID provider, signal our services and uh, the pipeline. I mean, uh, couldn't be more standard from the previous video. You should know what all of that does. Quickly taking a look at the default controller should give you an idea for how I'm handling the local scenario. So a local scenario is you have an app and uh, again, you just have the single instance running, but you still want to send notifications from different places within your application. You do not take the iHub context and distribute it all over the controllers, all over little services and use that iHub context in all those various places. Again, imagine SignalR is a red dot. You want to seclude the red dot. You want to have it in as least places as possible. So we give it a well-defined interface, iNotification sync with one method. A sync is where you can place your notifications and then they will be handled later on. The push async method is implemented by the notification service and the background service implementation here is what allows this service to be registered as a hosted service. Big note, if you don't know anything about the background service and the channel that is being used here, go watch my channel video. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description. I'm explaining everything about the background service and uh, channels in that video. It's a little bit old, but still relevant. So what happens in the default controller is a request is made. I am pushing a notification to the channel and then I'm returning. This is a zero wait time. So if my notification chain is not just signal or in real time, it could be very, very long. So let's say first we check, is the user connected to signal arm? If not, then let's try to either do a web push or a native one. Which application is the user using most? We have to query database for the activity. And then we have to figure out what's the best color to use in this notification for him to open it. So it's a little bit of an involved process. And then maybe you see how many emails have we sent to the user? Do we need to send another one? Is it a little bit too much? Are we being spammy? So that notification process can be pretty involved and you don't necessarily want to make the user making a request wait for that process to finish. So this is what the channel is. We put the notification request on the queue and then we get on with our day and then this service will process it. So th that is what is happening here. Again, if you just inject the iHub context into different places to send your notifications, you are not going to be able to have this responsibility chain for your notification message. So that is why you have a specific notification service that can handle many notification scenarios. Nevertheless, the payload is super simple. Who do we want to send the message to and what do we want to notify them of? 
The notification sync should be pretty simple. It's just an interface where we can supply this notification service with just this method to just write a notification to it. The bulk of this is happening here where this service is a singleton. So we need to use an iService provider if we want to surface any other services from within this method here. Otherwise, we have a Redis connection. I'm using Redis as a publisher subscriber service. So essentially Redis is going to tell my service if I need to do something. You can see I'm subscribing to an event here. So that's for Redis. As for the local scenario, I'm just creating this channel and anything that's going to be on that channel, I'm just going to try to execute that notification. So this is the distributed scenario. This is the local scenario. For the distributed scenario, it's pretty similar to how you would do most publisher subscribers. So if you're using RabbitMQ, Google PubSub, I don't know, some AWS implementation, whatever. This is a Redis implementation. It's super similar to SignalR. What's the event name? What do we want to do when this event occurs? Super simple. We get in the message. I am going to deserialize it to this notification. I'm going to figure out, okay, does this message want me to send it to this user? And what kind of message? I construct the payload. And yeah, I just send it to this specific user. And this specific user, again, this comes back to the point that I'm, I keep making that SignalR makes it really easy for you to be precise on who do you want to notify. So that's the distributed scenario. The local scenario is just a loop where we check, is there anything on the notification queue? If there is, start processing it and again, create a payload and push it into the hubs, very similar to what we're doing here. If you'd try to compare these two and what is what, basically what parts are the same, what parts are different, these parts are really the same. We're surfacing the hub context and we we're trying to get a message. These parts are the same. These parts are the different parts where locally you have a channel where all the places where the events are popping up on which you want to notify, you're all you're putting them all down into this sync and then the ser this service handles it. With the distributed scenario, the sync is the Redis server. So the Redis server is where all the events are going to go and then Redis server will distribute those events amongst all of the instances which should do the notifying where the SignalR connection exists and it will be a little bit more apparent when I do the demo. But this is the controller. I mean, not too complicated. If you're struggling with it, go through the code line by line. But I think uh, I don't want to spend too much time explaining it. For the index HTML, super simple. I said when I establish a connection, I am passing a user query string where I decide what the user ID is. And then I subscribe to a notify event, which is pretty much what I'm going to be doing here. And here when I'm sending notifications, again, I have logs to say what kind of notification am I sending a Redis one or a local one. Then I have a notify message. What user am I going to send a message to? And I do it using this default controller user message. And then I construct the payload here. Let's go ahead and run the demo. I'm going to start first a service on fi port 5000. And then I'm going to start a service on port 5002. So the two services are going to start while those are spinning up. Let's get the first one running here. So this is the first connection. This is the second connection. So the first and second connection are going to be connect connected to service one. The third connection is going to be connected to service two. Okay. On port 5002. Uh, we will connect foo on here. We're going to connect bar on service one account two. The third user is going to be Bob, right? You, you got to have a Bob. All right. So as the names I've entered uh, here, those are going to be their respective IDs. And that just makes it super simple to. So if I want to notify myself of something, I'll say something like this, yo, and then a notification is sent to me. It's not sent to these other people. If I want to send a notification to bar, I have to specify his name. Okay. And then the notification is sent. If bar wants to notify foo, we specify foo and we say hello, and we'll be able to see the notification here. 
these two connections will not be able to notify Bob. So if we try to do something like Bob and yo, okay, neither the foo or Bob receive this message and equally because locally Bob is not aware of these two connections and these two connections are not aware of Bob. They're happening on two separate instances. So this is where you have a distributed problem and the channel which belongs in the application cannot really be extracted into the second instance because as the applications spin up, they each have their own channels. So hopefully you understand that. Going to the distributed scenario where we have a Redis instance and the Redis instance is going to act as a sync. What I'm going to do from this link path script and the link path script is included here in the code base is what you could do from any place, from any application, from any service. You have the two applications that we're currently running, the two instances. You could have a third application over there that's a completely different one, or you could have a link path script like I do here, or you could have a cloud function that triggers this specific thing, which puts a message into Redis. So we are publishing a event called notification with this payload. So I JSON serialize it, that's the payload, that's what we're going to receive. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to notify foo. You can see here a Redis notification has been sent. This is the payload. So if we come back here, foo was the first one and here's hello world. So it's probably maybe a little bit more descriptive to say hello world from Redis. So let me run this again. And there's the notification that Bob is receiving. Foo is not receiving it and Bob is not receiving it. Uh, let's go ahead and notify Bob this time. Okay, so here's Bob and he's receiving the notification from Redis. This is how you handle a distributed scenario. Do please note I am being very stupid here and I'm basically saying all instances are going to receive this message and they're just going to try to send it to a user with this identifier use the hooks on connected on disconnected to maintain your active connections a user to a connection mapping is your user currently connected to your service if he is send try to send him a notification if this instance doesn't have a user currently connected don't send anything don't try this go straight to the push notification or some other mechanism. And by the way, if you are struggling with the connection multiplexer and Redis and stuff like that, I have a Redis tutorial where I cover distributed caching. If you're interested in that, go ahead and watch that. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. I do not cover PubSub there, which is what I'm using here. If people want PubSub tutorials, do leave a comment. Nevertheless, this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section or come ask them on my Discord server. I also stream making some of these solutions on twitch.tv. A link is in the description. If you want to be notified of my live streams, ask for the stream role on the Discord server. That'll be all from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.